hello and welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to dive right back into another root tutorial this time for the eerie dynasties all right so the cats have established their keep in the bottom left clearing which means our roost must go in the top right the proud Eerie dynasties wish to reclaim the glory of their once great aristocracy and retake the woodland from the Marquis. They score each turn by building and protecting roosts in the woodland. We begin with a roost and six warriors. The roosts are the Eerie's only building type, whereas the cats have three different building types. They are used to craft cards from your hand, recruit warriors, and score victory points each turn. Alright, so we're going to need to select a leader, and you will see that each of the leaders have their own abilities. So, in the bottom here, you can see the, the builder allows you to ignore disdain for trade when you craft, etc. And then, between that and the name, they have two words which indicate actions in the decree. And picking a leader, each one of them will set two actions that will automatically go in your decree and despot is the only one with build so it's a common opening leader for beginner eerie players so we're going to go ahead and select despot here so we can see that we have now a bird card in move and a bird card in build those were the loyal viziers that we saw get added to the decree there. so we must follow the official decree each turn and each column of the decree is associated with a different action our leader as we just saw, determines the initial actions in the decree being move and build. And every turn during bird song, we have to add one or two cards to our decree. And only one of those can be a bird. So we're going to add a mouse card to recruit. Now I'm already going to go a bit against the tutorial here and say uh, just real quick that putting a suited card in recruit, aka not a bird card, is not usually a good idea because as we're going to see if you ever can't follow all of the actions listed in your decree you're going to go into turmoil which is not good we will explore the effects later in this tutorial but if we are putting a recruit in a mouse it's very easy for the other players in the game if they so choose to say all we have to do is destroy that mouse roost and then they can't recruit in a mouse clearing and then they just turmoil us right away so just keep that in mind in your first few games as Eerie, that you're going to want to try and stay away from that uh, pitfall. So as our decree grows, we can do more and more each turn. And when we assign cards to the decree, only the suit applies. So if we wanted to use it, a card's effect, we're going to have to save it for the crafting phase, which is during daylight. So in Birdsong, we may craft cards from our hand using Roost. Oh, is it actually... Is it actually craft during... No, daylight is craft. Okay, so that's just a typo in the tutorial. So we make craft cards from our hand using roosts, and each roost contributes the suit of its clearing towards paying costs, much like the Marquise workshops. In fact, the exact same way. So our roost in the mouse clearing will allow us to craft sappers. Man, they really like crafting sappers in these tutorials. Again, Sappers is a bird card. The bird cards are also valuable for the Eerie because they provide a lot of flexibility in their decree. So I also don't necessarily agree with crafting Sappers, although it is a tutorial and we're just doing it as an example. All right, so during daylight, our decree is resolved from left to right, starting with recruit, ending with build. And we're gonna recruit a warrior in a roost matching the suit of the decree assignment, which for us right now is mouse. Then we move on to move. And since it's a bird move, we can move from any clearing. Note that the move is move from a clearing, not move to. So if, say, we had a bunny card in move, we wouldn't be able to do a bunny move because we have to move from a bunny clearing, not to. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to move three warriors down to this fox clearing, and that will allow us to maximize the hit potential of a die roll since a die... Uh, rolls between 0 and 3. We don't actually have a battle action, so we're not going to take it. One thing to note is if the Marquise did have an ambush, it would reduce our number of hits down to 1, 
So if you suspect that they had an ambush, you might want to move one or two more warriors if it was a particularly crucial battle for you. All right, so now we are going to build our second roost, and that is going to fulfill the build portion of our decree. At the start of our evening, we score victory points for our roosts, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the roost track here. So the more roosts you have, the more victory points you score each turn, and you can see that our third and sixth roosts will give us extra card draws the same way that the Marquis recruiters do. So our next goal for the tutorial is to establish a third roost. Okay, here come the cats. Produce some wood at their sawmill. We're going to build a recruiter in a central clearing, and then take a recruit action. Decent turn for the cats there. Alright, so now we are going to... Oh, it's going to want us to add a fox card to recruit. Because they want us to get more warriors out. Again, that's a bit risky. And now we're going to go ahead and assign our mouse card to battling. Okay. And we're going to go ahead into daylight. So, nothing to craft this turn. But... We can only gain one point from crafting anyway. So, like I said in, a pre in the previous video, crafting either rewards you with items and points or effects. There's no uh, detriment to the Eerie when they craft for effects, but when they're crafting for points, they're limited to one, unless they have the Builder Leader, which we saw earlier, uh, removes Disdain for Trade. And while we're talking about Disdain for Trade, we might as well talk about the Lords of the Forest ability, which allows Eerie to rule any clearings where they're tied in presence. And that can uh, come in handy more often than you might think. Alright, so we're going to have to recruit a warrior in each of these two clearings. And then we're going to go ahead and move three warriors into the mouse clearing with the recruiter, and that's going to set up our battle, which we're going to have to take in a mouse clearing every turn from here on out until we turn well or the game ends all right let's go ahead and fight it's gonna be a 2-1 so we unfortunately won't take out the recruiter but not a terrible roll there and in fact, leaving the recruiter there is nice because it means we don't have to do any extra work next turn to get our mouse battle, right? If the recruiter had been removed, then on our upcoming turn, we would not be able to battle in this mouse clan because there's no cat presence. We would have to go all the way over here to get our mouse battle. It's the only clearing with cats, so it's actually quite nice that the recruiter is still on the board. We'll go ahead and build a roost there. And now we draw an additional card because we have three roosts. Marquise is going to use their field hospitals. And recover those two warriors back at their keep. And then we can initiate a battle here in the fox clearing. the sappers card which means that all warriors are going to uh, drop in this fight but the roost is going to go down which is quite unfortunate because like i was talking about before we only have one roost in a fox clearing so not only are the marquis going to get a point for destroying the roost they're going to cause us to lose points on our turmoil which we're going to see in a second our little vizier feels turmoil approaching, but we must add to the decree each turn no matter what, so we're going to make an assignment, not worry too much about where. Let's add a mouse card to recruit so that we can at least get another warrior out on the board before we turmoil. We have nothing to craft, so let's go straight into resolving the decree. We got five warriors here and two here, so it makes sense to focus on bulking up this clearing. Take both of our recruits in there. And unfortunately now we have no fox roofs to recruit at. So that is the danger of putting suited cards in a recruit. It, you should avoid it if possible. Definitely much safer to put them in move and battle sometimes. 
So let's go ahead and continue into turmoil. So since we couldn't fulfill all actions, our leader is going to get deposed and we're going to lose some points. All right. So we discard all the cards in our decree. We're going to be starting fresh and we're going to lose one point for each bird card that we had in the decree. So we only have the two being the viziers. So we're going to lose two points and then we're going to pick a new leader and go straight to evening. We're not going to get to play the rest of our turn. Poof, they're gone. All right, so let's choose a new leader here. We've got three options now. Uh, Despot is not an option for us for the rest of the game unless we go through all four leaders. And if you um, go through all four leaders, then it is highly unlikely that you're going to be winning that game as Theory Dynasty, so let's just say that. So I think it would be nice to pick up the commander here. He's going to let us place two warriors each time we take a recruit action. So let's grab him. He's going to add to the recruit and battle parts of our decree. And so, like our vizier says, avoiding turmoil requires careful placement of cards on the decree. And we're going to have to try and match suits to the clearings we plan on interacting with. And the bird cards uh, they do lose victory points for adding more of them if we turmoil, but they offer flexibility that can help prevent us from turmoiling. As we saw, if we had had only bird cards and recruit, we wouldn't have turmoiled there. So I do like how the Eerie play a lot. They're like a puzzle where you're constantly uh, balancing uh, pieces of the puzzle higher and higher and uh, try and keep it from falling over. It's a, it's a precarious dance. Uh, I'm a fan. A uh, bit of a spoiler, I, I actually do like the cats the best of the four base factions in Root, but Yuri is high up on the list for me as well. I am an Yuri fan. Alright, so we need to score 10 points to complete the scenario. So we can minimize the decree box here to take a look at the map, and let's go ahead and see what we want to do here. We only have fox cards, which isn't great. So when we only have fox cards, it's going to make the most sense to put it in move. So let's go ahead and do that. We could be able to craft this later. So let's Oh, I mean, yeah, I pressed the cancel button on the decree if you want to undo it. Sure, sure. I mean, he's right, but also, like, the only thing we could do is... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. We don't have another move, unfortunately, so we can't actually do that without turmoil. He's right. So, unfortunate card draws. Um... Let's go ahead and put it in battle, which I don't want to do, but it's the only way to really ever avoid. And we don't have a move yet. Uh, dude, like, there's no way we're not turmoiling here. We can't recruit. We can't build because there's no way to move. Okay, well, yeah, sorry about that. Um, this was maybe not the best example I could give you of how to play the Eerie here. Um, but... As unfortunate as it is, sometimes that's just the hand you're dealt with the Eerie. So when you turmoil, you're going to want to have a well-established hand because you're going to have played several turns. And that's going to help prevent uh, a double turmoil like we just saw because you're going to hopefully have accumulated a bird card or two to help get your new decree on its feet. And since we were forced to turmoil as part of the tutorial, we were left with absolutely no cards and we were completely at the whim of the draw to uh, determine what happened next. So we're going to go with Commander, which will allow us to move in battle. So let's hope for no turmoil on this turn. So we're not going to bite off more than we can chew, and remember that, yeah, we're going to fall the turmoil. We, we just saw that happen, unfortunately. So, let's think about what we want to do here. Uh, 
unfortunately for us yet again, we don't have a mouse card and we only have Rusty Mouse Clearings. Thankfully, because of our burden, though, we can add a, a suited move card and we can move into the clearing that we then wish to move from. So let's actually craft this, but no, we want to hold on to as many cards as we can. to rule on the tie since we're lords of the forest and then we will take our battle against the marquis here and because we have the commander leader we get to deal an extra hit in battle when we're attacking so we rolled a three but it's capped at two because of our warriors but we get an extra hit from commander which is actually going to allow us to destroy the recruiter which is really nice and just so you know when uh, buildings or tokens are being destroyed and you have more than one uh, the defender gets to choose which get removed first not the attacker. Cats are going to deal the hospital again. And they're going to craft using that workshop. Armors. Which allows them to discard that card during battle to ignore all the gold hits they took. They're going to battle a clearing which we have. Six warriors. That's a bit of an interesting decision. They will knock out two. It doesn't really accomplish much for them. And they're going to take a march. Alright, here comes our turn. We're still aiming for... Unfortunately, uh, no bird card to put in build again. So, we're either going to have to put a suited card in build. Most likely being the rabbit uh, build here. And build one, two three roosts before turn rolling. Yeah, this is not an ideal situation to be in as the Eerie for sure. The rocky start did not help us. But yeah, let's go ahead and put this in build. As much as I don't want to, we need to score points fast. And if we don't, uh, even in a regular game, if we didn't put this card in build now, we would uh, get left behind if we're not scoring points. So unfortunate that we have to do that but do it we will nonetheless and we're not actually recruiting any birds either we're just working with what we have on the board so that's unfortunate let's march these guys back into this clearing and then let's march since we have to move from a bunny we've got to move let's move them back into here, just one guy, and then for our battle, we don't want to lose any warriors in this clearing, let's battle here, it's possible we roll three and take out the bonus with our extra hit, yep, we are going to do that, uh, unfortunately it was a three three, so, oh, I'm going to use the armors, so, they're only going to take the one hit that wasn't rolled, being the bonus hit from Commander. So that is quite unfortunate for us there, but we are going to get to build our roost and complete the turn. Man, still no bird cards, alright. That's fine, that's fine. I don't even feel comfortable using a suited recruit, even as a last resort, because... We only have multiple roosts in mouse clearings, and we don't have a mouse card. We've just gotten really unlucky in this uh, game so far that we're playing. We'll go ahead and get another warrior picked off there. We're going to need to increase our warrior count at some point, I would think. I mean, we can we can get by without it, without doing so. to bunny recruit and just hope they don't take out the roost. I don't want to do that though. Ooh, 
let's go ahead and do it though. Yeah, this is this is quite the situation as the area here. And the fox cards aren't doing much for us anyway, so let's craft this travel gear. Getting us closer to the 10 points we need to reach our goal. And that actually puts us in a good spot because we're gonna get three points from roosts. So we could possibly There's a way, so let's go ahead and move the two warriors in here. We need to roll again on a tie, useful. And then we'll move both we'll move both warriors out. And that's a bit risky because it's leaving our well, actually never mind. I was gonna say it's leaving our one bunny roost undefended, but at the end of the turn we'll have a new bunny roost here. So it's not putting us in immediate danger of turmoil, but it's Still not a great play, leaving an independent roost. I'm only doing that because I'm trying to get to 10 points on this turn, so. And if that happens, the cats won't get another turn. So I'm only to do the one here, and we get it, and we get the commander bonus. So we're gonna take out the workshop, which will get us another point, which puts us in a striking distance of 10 with our final roost. So that was a bit of a sticky situation, but we were able to maneuver our way out of it. Alright, so that was the Eerie Dynasties tutorial. Again, just really covering the basics of the faction. And so if you guys want a full-fledged strategy guide, let me know in the comments. I'll definitely uh, consider making that. And I will see you guys in the next video where we'll be covering the tutorial for the Women Alliance.